It's another year of disruption. Chaos. I feel like you're begging me to say shit show right there. One word, I would probably say opportunity. Police. It sucks. <laughs> and community. And probably the second word is pivot. Welcome to Project Tumbleweed, a real-time documentary about life in America during a pandemic. My name is Scott Henderson, aka Scotty Hendo, and I'll be your guide. COVID-19 has turned life upside down and exposed old, unhealed wounds. It's becoming apparent that we have a long ways to go before we get through this. I'm traveling the country to meet with people of all stripes to learn how they're adjusting to these new realities so that you can learn lessons to apply to your own life. Every episode features six new people as I travel, and accompanying every episode will be the full-length interviews for everybody I sit down to talk to. That way, you can dive deeper for those people that pique your interest. This journey follows historic and prehistoric routes as a reminder that we aren't the first to face great disruptions, and we won't be the last. We'll start with a stand-up comedian turned therapist and police chaplain. Then, we're going to meet an owner of a bookstore, a food entrepreneur, professional baseball player, a couple who owns several small-town businesses, and the proprietor of a co-working space. What lessons can we learn from those who came before us? And what lessons can we share with future generations? Ready to hit the road? Let's start at Prophets Down State Park near Lafayette, Indiana. I chose this site to recognize the indigenous people who have lived for thousands of years in what we call America today. This location is where an alliance of Native American tribes gathered to resist the encroachment of their lands. It was but one in a series of attempts that ultimately failed and led to their ways of life changing forever. This doesn't feel day to day uncomfortable. But of course, there's this nagging fear hanging over you that would someone in the family or would I be diagnosed and get this thing? And then and then you're down that slippery slope that scares people profoundly. And it would scare me. And you wind up on a ventilator. It didn't become a real, real and emotional until whatever the day of the week was, that the deaths in New York City began to spike and spiral and we were all glued to the numbers that were overwhelming the first responders. Before the COVID uh, crisis, 40 million Americans had a diagnosed anxiety disorder. That's just diagnosed. I mean, there were tens of millions more who, who have a, a, a struggle with anxiety, sometimes severe up into panic disorders, panic attacks. And then the other side of that, which is more lethal, is depression. Now, if you think about that range, okay, of your mood, getting low or getting amped up, and so what is it that facilitates that? Because stabilizing our mood is always the challenge of being a human being. And if you're like an amped up person or a low key person, keeping them in that range of functioning is health. And this creates challenges to do that. I think my daily life is going to feel richer than ever after this because I'm, I'm an optimist and I believe that uh, the American culture will change and grow. We will find new heroes, just as the heroes are emerging now in the middle of this. As a therapist, I feel like I'll always have meaningful work. I mean, my area of expertise is stress, anxiety, and depression, which are epidemic in the culture before this. Uh, and now more than ever, I feel like I can be a, a helping resource for people. A couple of challenges for me in my business, um, the challenge of how to reopen safely, responsibly. So how to balance the serving customers um, and providing a community space as we have done for the last five years. Um, figuring out how to do that safely is, I don't know if that's exciting, but it's, um, it is a worthy challenge and Something, a problem that I think needs to be um, addressed is the relationship between police and community and the militarization of police makes me feel uncomfortable. And I am very interested in, in seeing that get changed and uh, be addressed. So yeah, my name is Leo or Leonardo Colon is my full name. Back of house manager, um, they call they call me the kitchen extraordinaire too. Um, but basically, yeah, just helping provide um, meals, make sure the kitchen is in uh, full operation. So I explain I have a CBD uh, plant based bakery. Um, that's my business. So when COVID nineteen actually felt um, real to me was when the farmers market. Um, it was the indie winter farmers market that I was a part of. 
they closed and it was relatively short notice. So the market was on Saturdays. And I think they told us on the, the Thursday. The market is kind of like, it's a nice, I say it's nice vibes, it's good people. Um, a lot of people that go to farmer's markets have the same like mindset. Um, so that was like a, another little community there. And I couldn't see those people either. But with that, luckily, farmer's markets are now back in full swing. Um, I'm in another one and about to be in a second one. And some of my good uh, fellow vendors are, in, are actually in this market to, um, as well. So that's been, that's been awesome. It's very unique because a lot of the challenge I face, I have a say in what goes on, whether it be through my preparation, through my job or execution in the game. This you don't have a whole lot of control over. You can do all the things that you're required to do. You can wash your hands, you can social distance. And I think people that are doing that are still getting it at certain times. So there's so much of this that is out of our control. And when things are out of your control, things are very worrisome. But I think with all the things that have gone on, it's given each of us a better perspective of, you know, how we treat others and just, just how far that can go. And I think one day at a time, if, if we all work on being kind to others, I think things will start to get better with each day. And once you get better each day for a little bit at a time, that little bit turns into something a lot bigger. So it has been one thing after the uh, another. And uh, every day you wake up, you think, well, today can't be crazier than yesterday. And then something else comes up. It's just been one of those years. And hopefully as a society, we can you know, gather the strength to move past all this. As far as the restaurant, um, Monday we started opening more hours. Um, we reopened after being closed for 30 days on April 20th, and we were just opening four hours in the evening. And we weren't, we weren't doing a lot of business, but I just felt like I needed to bring those employees back. My big fear was what's going to happen to my business? What's going to happen to my employees, <clears throat> more importantly? I was more worried about them and them not being able, me not being able to continue to provide them a job. And they, they supported me and told me, don't worry about us, we'll be fine. But that was hard to hear. Um, we stuck it out for a few days and finally then we just locked our door for 30 days. People live in rural communities their whole life, want to live and die there. This is their home. And to lose that retirement facility would force people to have to spend the remainder of their lives in a different town or a different community or a different state. And this enables them to stay right here in the home, their home, their own town. The fear of what was going to happen to them because they became, like I said, he's been there 14 years, but I would go and visit with him and they became friends. And to think that they would have to go to other states with their children or go to nursing homes or wherever was, it was scary. I think it was fear for the business because like I thought I'd prepped pretty well for where like society was going. So we're building a business because people are disconnecting like where they live from where they work and they're gonna need social hubs to plug into and co-working is still really nascent in Iowa. So like people are looking at us as experts. Uh, we'll have the kind of pick of the places we want to expand and grow this business into to like one day immediately like that monday when things started to shut down like members started canceling right away startups that are here that were like in the event industry were like we have no revenue like we just lost it all we never had a statewide order here to like shut down even though we kind of i think a lot of people were like waiting for that to happen um so what we did was lock the doors our members have access keys it was kind of like you could use it as your own risk if you feel fine coming in you're welcome to do it please don't come in if you're sick but we pulled our staff out other than they would come kind of restock and sort the mail and things like that once a day tough times don't last but tough people do you know and that's when you live in a, in a rural community small towns you have to suck it up you got to work a little tougher to get things achieved uh, but everybody needs to hang in there Hold family members close, hold those that you care about close. Enjoy every second of every day. I'm trying to do that with my myself and my family because uh, a lot of people have had that taken away quick and it's a, it's a sad situation and do all that we can to, to make our lives and the lives around us better each and every day. We don't have answers. You know, all we can do is the little things that we think might help, but if this 
you know, pandemic has taught us anything. Even the world's best doctors don't know. There, there's no guarantees in this life. We have to treat others with respect. And I think with that, you know, change will start to happen. As I reflect on this first set of conversations, it's clear we were all caught by surprise. And that's gonna make this a unique shared experience that we can all build upon. How we choose to respond to this disruption is gonna determine how we overcome it. We have to ask ourselves, who do we wanna become? Because that's the choice we can make. No one knows how this is gonna unfold and we need to prepare ourselves for the work ahead of us. That brings us to the end of the first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. We've got many more miles and many more people to meet. They've got insights waiting for us. So until the next episode, be kind to yourself and those around you. And if you look out for each other, take heart. We'll get through this.